Hi, my name is Jay Wilson from Onyx Reporting. And in this webinar, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how PowerView and PowerPivot in, can work in your reporting and analysis ecosystem. We have this challenge today. Um, a lot of the users and partners that I talk to are using um, cube-based reporting almost exclusively for their reporting and analysis needs. And the challenge with that is that cubes are by nature inflexible. In so far as if I'm an analyst that needs to add data from another data source, maybe there's a spreadsheet that I have to pull data from, or maybe I need to compare my company's data with data that's available uh, through a web service. Right? I don't have the option of just integrating that into my uh, pivot table-based reporting unless there's extensive customization at the staging database um, and then some more ETL to get the data into the data warehouse, and then add the data as measures, dimensions, and hierarchies within my cubes. And who knows how long that could take, right? So the solution that I'm exploring today is this idea that maybe PowerView and PowerPivot um, can be that stopgap, can be a tool that will allow me to prototype changes, future changes to the cubes, but also will allow me to get my job done insofar as with PowerView and PowerPivot, I can rapidly um, define a new data model that integrates data from multiple sources. So let's take a look at that. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is here I am in Excel. Um, I'm just going to click on the Manage Data Model button here under PowerPivot. And let's define a new data model. Um, to keep things easy, I'm going to grab the, all of my data from one database. Um, it's going to be my data warehouse. And we all understand sales, so I'm just going to take a look at some sales data here. So where is my posted sales? All right, so I'm going to talk about sales data, and I want to relate it to a second table. And this table is just going to have some customer data in it. Grab the wrong table, posted purchase, and then posted sales. Um, one of the things that's really intriguing about PowerPivot is the fact that all of this work is in memory. Um, we're not actually writing a new SQL database. We're not creating a new SQL database. All of these transformations are stored in memory. So I guess the limiting factor is, one, how much data you have, and two, how much RAM is on the, the computer that you're working on. Okay, so I have my two tables, customer and posted sales. The first thing I want to do is I want to say, okay, well, what's the relationship between these two tables? Um, and that, of course, is going to be where the sell to customer number on posted sales is equal to customer number in the customer table. So to find that relationship, I'm going to go to the design tab, and I'm going to create a table relationship. And I'll start at posted sales. And like I said, I'll relate sell to to customer number. And it errors out on me. It says uh, it cannot create the relationship because each column contains duplicate values. The customer number is not unique on the customer table. And that's because the same customer number could be recycled for different companies. And this table has all of the customers from all of my companies. So what is the solution? I need a composite key. I need a key that combines company and customer number. And that's what I'll use to relate the two tables. So 
So when I go to my posted sales, I'm going to create a calculated column. I just did this, but now I'll do it with words. <laughs> uh, so here, equals, and then I'm going to use the syntax of Excel, ampersand to concatenate. And the field I'm looking for is the cell to customer number. All right, again, how easy was it? I don't have to know SQL syntax. This is just Excel. And again, all of your data analysts hopefully know the language of Excel. Um, and we're just going to rename this column customer key. All right, let's go ahead and create that relationship again. Customer has calculated column, didn't rename it, and then posted sales, we'll use the customer key. There we are. And relationship created. Now let's see what this t looks like when I go ahead and toss this into a pivot table. I know we said we're going to move away from the strictly pivot table based reporting, um, but just to take a look at it in an environment that we're familiar with. Okay, here I am, I've got pivot table fields, but intriguingly enough, I'm now able to look at fields from two separate tables. I'm allowed to say, okay, from posted sales, let's grab sales amount. But when I want to slice and dice, I'm going to grab fields from the customer table and let's group it by state. And you're thinking, Jay, this is nothing we can't do in the cubes. And you're absolutely right. This is something you can, would, and should do in the cubes. But what I'm pointing out is that as an end user, I have the ability to create a data model combining data potentially from multiple different data sources. And I can create my own transformations for what I want the data to look like in a data model, and then I can toss it into a pivot table. And then once I have it the way I want it, yeah, I'll hand it over to the BI team and I'll say, okay, this is the prototype for what I want, and then now you can worry about natural keys, surrogate keys, slowly changing dimensions, and all the other things that we worry about when we build BI solutions. But this is a rough idea of what I'm looking for. Okay, now we have the customer, um, dimension set up, I wonder, is it possible to get some semblance of hierarchies? Let me switch back to my data model. Under the Home tab, I'm going to switch to Diagram View. And let's see if we can't define some hierarchies. So I'll grab City, State, and Country Code, and I'm going to right-click and Create Hierarchy. and we'll call it customer by city. As I expand the node, I can see, okay, I've got state and country code. Oh, that's not in order. Switch those two, just drag and drop. Country code, state, city, and let me add customer number. Again, just drag and drop. How easy is this? I wonder, can I rename this column from here? No, I can just add it to my hierarchy. That's all right. Okay, I created one hierarchy of customers by cities. What if I wanted another hierarchy of customers and salespersons? Easy as pie. Another thing that's interesting is that you can actually store um, some semblance of metadata in your table insofar as I can choose a column and I can enter a description for it. 
or under sorry about that little hiccup there um, again I'm looking at uh, the customer table I have the option of defining what type of data we see in this column um, I've got country code selected I am under the advanced tab here under data category I can choose oh this is a country region or I can choose the city column and I can choose that this is the city so I can add um, metadata as it were about the different fields that I'm pulling into my um, into my table into my data model and you can see there's a couple different choices and this of course is going to become important later as we start trying to combine the data maybe against a web-based service which actually we're going to take a look at next So I have my uh, pivot table that we were looking at. Um, I can see I've got customer. Um, we can see here I've got my customer hierarchy that I just set up. So what if I drop in customer by salesperson? Yep, it behaves just the way we expect it to. Um, but we weren't exclusively interested in pivot tables. The question was, what other presentation method do we have? Um, so we're going to take a look at working with Power View as a reporting tool. All right, here we've got Power View. You can see under Power View fields over here on the right, I've got customer and posted sales. Um, I'd, I'd see any of the tables that I'd added to my data model. And let me start by adding the amount field. So there's my measure sales amount. Okay. If I want to slice it by, let's say, city, could do so. And then if I want to add in another field, let's say customer discount group, right? So now I can see, okay, how does that data break down? And it's nice. It's a little bit more formatted, you might say, than a pivot table, but it, you know, it's nothing groundbreaking. But what is intriguing is this idea that in the customer dimension, I do have addresses. So what if I wanted to visualize with a map my sales data. Let me take out pass to my discount group real quick. Let's just look at it with city and sales amount. Okay. So um, what actually happened is Excel sent my data to Bing Maps to geocode the addresses and plot them on a map. Pretty intriguing stuff. Um, I can still work with this idea of um, using pivot tables to group my data. So let me grab country code and put country code above location. Okay. So now I'm seeing all of my data um, with sales amount by country. And then when I double click on a country, then I can see the different cities in which I have sales. And this interface is a bit more robust than um, basic pivot tables. I mean, obviously we're working with a, a map, which is, which is int intriguing on its own. Um, but you'll notice here, I don't see any data for Europe and that's because I've drilled down into the, um, the, into the US and to get back up, I have little controls up here at the top to drill up. Interesting start, interesting start. Um, let's see uh, what happens if I take city, drop it under color, and now I've got pie charts um, that shows different sizes of circles for sales amount 
and then different colors for each of the cities in which I have sales. I don't have that drill down ability right now because I'm only showing the locations of country code, but if I were to add state, I could drill down into a country and then I could see grouped by state. all of the different cities in which I have activity and pass it stuff. Okay? All right, so that really takes us to the end of the webinar, but I really wanted to point us to two really exciting features of Power View and Power Pivot, which mainly were, one, this idea that I can use Power View and Power Pivot to prototype a cube solution. The user says, oh, I have this need to integrate data from different data sources. I have this new measure that I need it to keep track of in order to, for, for a KPI report, or I have a, a different hierarchy that I want to put in place. They can prototype what they're looking for using the data model feature, and then, of course, plot it on their graph using Power View, make sure that it works the way they want it to. to. Um, and then once all that's done, we can hand it to you, the developer, and then the developer can say, okay, Here's what we need. Here's the ETL that we need in order to get this project done. All right, my name is Jay Wilson. Thank you so much for joining us on this presentation on Power View and Power Pivot and how it can play in your reporting and analysis ecosystem. You have a great day. Cheers.